Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. 2020 is my no buy budget year. One of the exceptions that I made to that when I made my rules at the start of the year is that when I go on holiday, I can purchase what I want and I don't have to stick to my no buy. Thought process behind that was that when I'm on holiday, I tend to shop really well and I've been kind of diving into that a little bit more recently and trying to figure out why that is. I think part of it is that generally when I'm on holiday it's a different currency so I have generally saved off in advance, moved a set amount to that currency and have to work within that so I have a budget and it's a case of thinking about that as a set amount and prioritising through it rather than at home where I am in theory still on a budget because I get paid a certain amount etc etc. It's not quite as kind of set a budget and then the other thing is when I've set that budget for going away, I've saved that budget up in advance and I have no guilt about spending it. Whereas at home, I might feel a bit more guilty about spending money from my paycheck and I know at home I sometimes do that thing where I'm like, oh I can't justify spending that just now on X item, so I don't buy X item. Then I spend the same amount of money on multiple other things that I don't actually want as much as I want said item. Whereas in holiday I'm much more likely to just splurge on the thing because I've got the money and I don't feel the guilt about it. The other thing about being in holiday is that there's always this idea that there might be something better whereas when I'm at home you get to a point where you know all the shops, you kind of know what the stock is and if you come across something really good you know that's probably the best thing you're going to come across at home because you know your local stores whereas on holiday if you're shopping with shops you don't usually have access to there's always that possibility that the next shop that you've not been in yet might have something better and it makes me really kind of weigh it up. There is potentially more to this though and that's something I'm going to talk about in my February money diary video and I thought what I'd do today is share with you the things that I bought in my last holiday which was when I went to London in between Christmas and New Year so the very very tail end of 2019 so recent the most recent spending that I did because basically I came back from London and I knew I was going on my no buy as of the 1st of January so I knew this was my sort of last bit of shopping I'd ever be doing for a year not ever and I was on holiday as well so it's, it's quite an interesting haul I think I had that thing in my head that this was the last hurrah as such but also was on holiday and was shopping arguably better than normal because I was on holiday but I thought what we'd do today is I do the first part like a normal haul video so I just show you what I bought but what I'm going to do is show you in the order that I bought it in because I think that's quite I think there's a significance to that which I'll get into as I show things and then once I've shown you everything in the order that I bought it in part two of the video is going to be going to rank everything first ranking is how excited I am about everything then also if someone was to come and be taking these things away one at a time and every time they took something else away I thought I was going to get left with everything that I was keeping what order would I give things up in and then at the end of the video rank the most used to the least used because I think that's quite interesting is that kind of correlation between how excited I am about it, how easily I would give up over something else and how often it's actually been used is quite interesting in terms of the way that I've shopped and the way that I've prioritised things and how I feel about things that I'm buying. Let's get on into it with part one which is talking you through everything that I bought in the order that I bought it in. First item that I bought and I'm going to be fully honest here and say I'd forgotten I bought this to count it into my London haul which is a bit strange because I've been on my beauty no buy this is my third year on my beauty no buy so it's not like I was buying beauty products anyway but already in my head this was a duty free purchase and I kind of counted it out of being a London purchase even though I bought it under my holiday exclusion to my beauty no buy and it was only when I sent a picture to Lauren that I, who I was in London with and said is this everything that I bought she actually was the one that reminded me I bought this at duty free so this was my first purchase and it is the Christmas 2019 Chanel brought out perfumes in these beautiful boxes so this is the number five one and you open it up and it looks like this on the inside. It is absolutely beautiful. It's just such a gorgeous dressing table piece. I really wanted this and I actually had mentioned it to my grand when she was asking me what I wanted for Christmas. I wanted this. So last year, well the year before last year, two Christmases ago, Chanel brought out number five in a red bottle which I got for Christmas the previous year. And what I wanted to do was get this 
use up this normal bottle although it's in the box it is just a normal bottle of Chanel number no. five you can buy this bottle any any time basically whereas the red bottle is limited edition so what I thought was I would use this up and then put the red bottle in here and it would just look really nice having the sort of combination of the special edition box display and the red bottle of Chanel number no. five and on Christmas day I got a big Chanel box but it was Chanel Mademoiselle that was in it I ended up buying this at duty free because as much as the Chanel Mademoiselle box on the inside obviously you open it up and it's Chanel Mademoiselle rather than Chanel number no. five this is exactly the same and this is something that I think is quite potentially interesting potentially something I need to start noting and deciding if I want to try and change that about myself but the inside exactly the same the front this one says Chanel number no. five I knew that would really irritate me if I finished up that Chanel Mademoiselle that came in the Mademoiselle box and put the number five in as much as when it was open it was going to look exactly the same as this it would really bother me that it said Mademoiselle in the front instead of number five I am quite a perfectionist and I think something about me in life is that I'm very all or nothing outside of my shopping habits. I'm very all or nothing. I'm either doing a thing and doing it 100% and I want it to be perfect or I'm not doing it. I'd rather not do something than do it not perfectly or not to the absolute best of my abilities. That's just part of my personality and I think it's that same sort of perfectionist part of my personality that was going to really niggle at me that this wouldn't have been the right box if I'd kept, well I did keep the Mademoiselle, I've got the Mademoiselle box, but if I had put that red number five in the Mademoiselle box. I'm kind of realising that I need to start kind of making my peace with things being not necessarily 100% perfect all of the time without dropping that I still want to strive for in my personal life for me if I'm doing something for it to be done to the best of my ability I think I do need to work on sort of making my peace with little things like that because realistically um, I bought this at duty free I can't remember how much it was but I think the RRP on it was £130 you say duty free would take 20% off of that this would have been £104 there or thereabouts at duty free but it was over £100 and basically what I'm saying is I spent £100 because this little flap in the front of the box was going to annoy me. So I don't I don't regret buying this because I like Chanel number no. 5. I will use up this bottle of perfume. But I've got a lot of perfume and adding another bottle of perfume. And I knew at the time that it wasn't a sensible thing to be doing because I know I've got a lot of perfume. I've been on a beauty... This is my third year of my beauty no buy. And perfume... I, I could still bathe in it and have perfume left. Um, I've got four perfumes in my project pan for this year. Perfume is a problematic category for me and I know that it is because I get swept up in the sort of the romance of the idea of what a perfume can be in the same way that I get swept up in the romance of what clothing can be and what it can kind of let you channel in your personality. Perfume has a very similar appeal for me. I got the bottle of this that I got for Christmas 2018 so I did not need another bottle of this actual scent. And what I'm saying is basically I spent £100 to get this box that says number five in the front when I have this box that says Mademoiselle in the front. So do I regret it? No, I can't honestly say I do. And I think right now in terms of my current mindset, I would know everything I've just said and I would know this isn't a sensible purchase, but I would make this purchase again because as much as I academically can know and understand that I need to let go of this like absolute perfection Thing. it's not a practical way to go through life I should not let a box niggle at me one word on a box niggle at me but it does and it still would and right now I would still think I was being ridiculous it's that kind of section where I know I'm being ridiculous but I know I'm going to do it again does that well I'm not going to do it again but if I had to make the choice again right now even two months later I'd make the same choice and I'd buy it again but I can acknowledge that it's a ridiculous purchase. After we landed in London we went to the hotel, we got ready and we went back out and we went to Selfridges and I had been in London a few weeks before that, I'd been down to see a play and I'd been to Selfridges and I'd been looking to see if the Pat McGrath counter had the Star Wars collection in yet. I love Star Wars, 
as you guys know if you've watched my introductory video to my no buy year I have included fan merchandise in my no buy because that is definitely somewhere that I spend a lot of money and I think it's it's that sort of psychology of identity and expressing identity through your things quite susceptible to Disney merchandise generally and I love Star Wars so very susceptible to Star Wars merchandise when something that I'm a fan of like Star Wars or Disney or whatever marries up with a brand like Pat McGrath that I really like as a beauty brand I bought when Pat McGrath worked at Max Factor and she did that Star Wars collection I bought that Star Wars collection so this was like the elevated and improved version but when I'd been down before they didn't have it when we went down we went by the counter and they did have it. There is definitely growth here because I know pre no buy, pre beauty no buy, I would have bought one of everything and I really wanted the R2D2 lip balm. I'm still a bit like oh I feel like I should have just got it as much as I would know it was a ridiculous £40 lip balm. I still wanted it and I still do want it but I didn't get any of the lip products I got the two palettes, so I got the one that's got C3PO on the front and this is it's called Galactic Gold and I got this one which is the Dark Galaxy. I bought the two of these at the same time. I swatched them, I couldn't decide between them. They were £50 each so it was £100 exactly for both of these palettes. That was my first transaction of the holiday once I got to London not counting my duty free and I have absolutely no regrets. I have not used either of these palettes yet. If these palettes had been released, they weren't in Star Wars packaging, would I have bought these? No. That is the thing. It's definitely the packaging that was made me like, I want to get these while we're on holiday. I wouldn't have been looking for eyeshadow palettes if they hadn't been to this theme. But at the same time when you buy an item from this collection, it's not just the eyeshadow you're buying, it is the packaging. That is part of it, that is part of what you're paying for, it's part of what you're buying into. They are in the boxes, that's the thing, and it is that combination of these being Pat McGrath eyeshadows and Star Wars. Only thing I would complain about is that this is how these came, so they had little um, sort of plastic stickers to keep them closed, which I tried to take a video of, so I'll insert it to show you what I mean, but there's no sleeve on these, so this outer packaging, which as I say, is what tipped me over into buying this was the outer packaging, is, is exposed and there's no sleeve so it's not going to get protected and I know over time, no matter how good quality this is, it's going to get a little bit bashed and I'm not massively comfortable with that. I would have really, really liked a sleeve on this and I don't think it would have cost the brand that much more to put a cardboard sleeve around these palettes. For the price of them, I don't think that was asking too much. I accept that's maybe not her branding but I think for the price point and for the fact that you are buying into this for the packaging there should have been a bit more protection on the packaging. After that I made the big purchase of the holiday. This was a planned purchase. I absolutely knew I was buying these when we went to London. Um, these had been on my wish list for quite a while. <laughs> Last year in the spreadsheet that I tracked everything that I bought, clothing and accessory wise, I also had a tab of that spreadsheet that was my wish list. And I think that was partly because I sort of knew there were things that I wanted and had wanted for a really long time that I'd never really got around to buying or never really got around to saving up for. Generally they were all super high ticket items. And again goes back to that thing of, I would be like, oh I can't justify buying this even though I've wanted it for ages and whatever and I have enough money but it just seems like a lot of money to spend on one thing and I can't justify it but I'll spend the same amount of money buying multiple other things. So that, that's that been a thing for a while that I've been aware that I do and that I want to change, hence obviously doing my no buy budget year this year. This year I'm not keeping a wish list specifically because I know there's levels of things that I want and I know when I really want something I won't forget about it. Whereas there are things that I could really intensely want for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months but in a year's time I won't remember and I don't want to start next year with a list of everything I didn't buy the year before. But these are a pair of Dior shoes and they had been on my wish list for a very long time before I purchased them. So as with all my designer shoes they come in their own individual dust bags. And these are the shoes that I purchased from Dior. What I really liked about these is that 
on first glance they are gold glittery shoes which they are gold glittery shoes but when you get up close there's quite a lot of bronze running through them as well so they're quite a deep gold they're not a really bright garish gold which i think means they'll actually go with more things and they're quite a low heel although they've got a heel on them they're definitely a comfortable heel and i thought these are the sort of shoes that would look nice i could wear them with like jeans and a nice top and they would take the outfit up a notch or i could wear them with a dress because although they've got the straps on them the straps are quite low so they're not cutting me right off at the ankle so they would look all right with a dress i'm so so pleased with these i have no regrets quite a spendy first day really is what we're saying so what we're saying when we say that is that i spent a lot of money in the first day and because i was in florida i was in florida from mid-november to mid-december basically and i got paid my november paycheck came in whilst i was away and i basically spent my whole november paycheck in florida we book London really last minute. I usually wouldn't quite be in this situation, but we book London, I think, four weeks in advance or something like that. It was, you know, it must have been more than that because it was, I knew when I was in Florida that I was coming back to go to London. Like, I knew that, but I still basically bombed my entire November paycheck in terms of my disposable income in Florida. So when we went to London in December, I just got my December paycheck. That was basically, that was my London budget, was my like disposable income from that because I hadn't saved up for this trip in advance. So by the time I had bought the perfume, the Pat McNath palettes and the Dior shoes, that was me. I was kind of out of money from the point of view that I had to feed myself while we were in London and I had to obviously pay for things in the month of January before I would get paid again. So everything else from here on out was made with that kind of awareness that I was running out of money. In fact, let me just readdress that because that everything I've just said is true, but I do just want to make it clear I don't my disposable income is paycheck to paycheck. So if I want to buy a handbag, I would generally save up in advance for that. I do have savings. So if I was to hopefully not, but say I was to lose my job tomorrow, I would be okay for a little while. I'm not living paycheck to paycheck on that line of like, wouldn't be able to survive if she didn't have her next paycheck. What I'm talking about when I say paycheck to paycheck is disposable income. And I just, I want to make that really clear that this project for me is about assessing how I use my disposable income, about trying to improve on that and about learning to live within my means, which I didn't actually realise until the end of January when I looked at my January money diary that I clearly wasn't living within my means and don't actually know how I've been doing that for months, years, my whole life, not sure. But yeah, so I just, I don't want to mislead anybody. This project is definitely about me learning to control my impulses, but it's not the project of somebody who is living a hand-to-mouth existence. So just to make that really clear. Day two, we went to Liberty. We got our eyebrows done at Blink. Then we walked down Carnaby Street. The next thing that happened was that I went into Liars and Lovers on Carnaby Street, which I'm gonna be honest, I 100% went into because I think that's an excellent name. There's a, a Biffy Clyro song. 100% went in because I like the name. It's a jewellery store and I made three purchases. Everything was, the whole shop basically seemed to be on sale. I got these earrings, which are very gaudy and gauche and they just seemed quite Dolce & Gabbana. There's actually a set of Dolce & Gabbana earrings that I really considered buying as my Valentine's Day gift to myself. It's my first gift of the year that I'm allowed under my no buy. And I actually, I'd wanted them for my birthday last year and they're not remotely the same as these, but they would kind of go with similar outfits. These were, I've got the receipt. These were 7.27. So I also, again, half price picked up these hair clips. So these were originally 8.50, so these would have been 4.25. I love the colour, so the colour is totally what drew me in, but they are basically like Kirby grips and I would really, really preferred, I have a set of free people hair clips, wait till I get them. So these are my free people ones and they're they're very similar actually, um, but these are like little bulldog clips, like little crocodile, is it crocodile? Bulldog? I think that's crocodile, yeah that would be crocodile, bulldog's the big clip, yeah. I love the design of these, but they kind of pull my hair and I have to do my hair with curvy grips and then just put these in as 
kind of decorative at the end and um, they don't really function to hold my hair. Then when I'm pulling them out I have to be super careful and it seems like no matter how careful I am they seem to pull clumps of my hair out at the same time. So a bit frustrating but I do love the design still, I love the colours, I think it's a beautiful shade of green. I just really wish it had been like this and now that I've kind of, I haven't had clips like this in years but I remember having things when I was little and them pulling in my hair the way that these pull in my hair and not liking it so yeah I feel like I wouldn't repurchase these. And then the last thing that I bought in Liars and Lovers was this ring which I really like again for 25 so probably the stones will fall out and whatever but I really do like it. Same beautiful shade of green as the hair clips and it's probably my favourite colour. Now the next shop that we went to or the next shop that I made a purchase in after that was over at Covent Garden and we went to the Glossier pop-up. I basically went in and I was buying something. These were my first gloss, no that's a lie, I got one of the eyelid things when we were in New York last year and spoiler alert for my next video but I think I'm going to declutter it but basically what happened was I probably wouldn't have bought that lid star but Lauren was getting, I think she was getting three and they came in like a set where if you got two you got like five dollars off or whatever so or, there was some kind of set going on and I was kind of humming and hawing but that was going to get me a little bit of money off of it and that was what tipped me over and I think actually if it hadn't been that set I probably wouldn't have bought it but like I just, I don't get the Glossier thing but I want to get the Glossier thing like I want to get what people love so much about it but I just, I don't and I should have, I should have stuck to that. I should have been aware of that. But I wanted to go to this pop-up. I'd seen it when I'd been in London before Christmas, but I sort of didn't want to wait in the queue on my own and whatever to go in. I also really like the carrier bags. As ridiculous as that sounds, the carrier bags are super beautiful. But I made the mistake of leaving mine in the living room and my grand has been mine. So the thing that I really wanted, which was the carrier bag, I don't even have. And it, it was also, it was a nice experience, but I could have gone into the shop with Lauren and had the experience without buying anything. Lauren's a big Glossier fan. She's got, I think, pretty much everything that they do. And I, it, the, the products are nice, but they're not really for me. And I should have, I should have been aware of that. And I went in and I did actually need a new hydrating serum. So the thing I went in, I went in knowing that I was buying this, I decided I was buying this, was Glossier Super Bounce, which is their hyaluronic acid and vitamin B5. Since buying this, I've basically found out that the the ordinary one is pretty much the exact same thing, but a lot cheaper. I just feel a bit like, I wish I'd just got the ordinary one. Like, I have liked, as you can see, I'm very nearly finished this. I like what it does for my skin but I don't think it's, it's definitely a hydrating product and th that is important to my skin but it's not like, I, can, I don't know how to kind of articulate it but what I mean is like when I've got things that are super potent ingredients like vitamin C or retinol or whatever, you know, something super anti-aging or super, you know, effective for targeting a problem, I want like the best version of that. Whereas like hyaluronic acid and vitamin B5 are very important to me but you can definitely get them at a lower price point so I bought this and I'm already a bit like yeah I won't repurchase this even though I do like what it does for my skin and I would repurchase the equivalent product but I'd repurchase it from the ordinary. I then bought three of the Glossier Play eyeliners because I wanted to want something that's the honest truth. I was in that shop and loads of people were there with their friends and they were all so excited and I was just a bit like I want to know what the hype is and I was kind of doing that thing where I sort of knew a skincare product was a functional product and that wasn't really going to make me understand what the hype was. So when I started swatching these and I really liked them I was like great I have found my thing that I'm going to get that's going to make me understand what the hype is. So I bought three. The first one which actually up till this morning I was kind of thinking was the one I was most excited about is called Hardcore Velvet. So you'll see the cutaway of me swatching this. So when I put this down, I pressed too hard obviously and the whole nib broke off. So that was a great start. But I, I feel like this was more green in the shop. In my head, this is more of a greeny blue, but it's, it's kind of just a deep blue and it's not that special. And I also think it actually is the exact same shade of blue as an eyeshadow that I'm considering decluttering because I don't think it does me any favors. 
So I haven't used this in my eyes yet, but I'm already a bit like, oh, I could see this getting decluttered and I've not even used it yet. The next one that I've swatched for you is Early Girl. Basically, I got the Frozen 2 Colourpop collection. I thought this shade would work really, really nicely with the Elsa palette. I thought it had real Elsa vibes about it. I have used the Elsa palette and didn't think to get this to use with it, so I didn't actually use it for the thing that I bought it to use for. So I don't regret it and I still like the colour, but it was definitely one of those ones in the moment I was very swept up and being like, this would go really perfectly with my Elsa eyeshadows. And then I used the Elsa eyeshadows and didn't even think about using this. And then lastly, this is one that I'm still most excited about, out of everything I bought in Glossier. This is the this is the only thing I should have bought from the things that I bought from Glossier, is the eyeliner in the shade Nectar, which is yellow and I haven't used this yet, but it's maybe not quite been the season yet. I'm very excited still about going to use this. So I'm much more excited about this than I am about any of the other three products that I bought. So basically, whatever I spent in Glossier should have literally been the cost of one highlighter. You know how I shopped really well on holiday? And I think, and again, probably because this was booked so last minute and I hadn't saved up, so maybe that wasn't quite there as much. But I think this was a case of like, I knew I had bought my big things so I knew I was like not running out of money but like I knew I didn't have enough money left to buy more like big ticket items or I could have bought one big ticket item and there was a pair of earrings that I kind of wish I had bought instead of buying all this other stuff. I didn't make that choice and I think it was because I hadn't saved up in advance. I didn't have that like holiday money. I had that thing where it was a bit like I'm spending my paycheck and because this is the same currency anything I don't spend here I can go home with and anything I do spend here I'm not giving myself the money to spend at home so it had a bit more of a crossover so this maybe isn't the best example of like shopping on holiday but it's this kind of smallest haul because it was quite a short holiday so it was the easiest one to do this with. That evening we were going to see Waitress which was so good and I would really highly recommend seeing it if you can. That meant we were kind of hanging about the Covent Garden area for a little while between having kind of finished and having our dinner and waiting for the show to start and we ended up in the Cryoland shop. First thing was this which I actually have this already. So this is my new one and this is my older one which is just a slightly smaller size doesn't look that obvious when you look at them but this fits inside this one. Can't remember how much this actually was. I really really like these for travelling. Kind of smooshy in that you can kind of, you know, the edges will kind of push out if you get something that's slightly longer than the bag is. Um, and the inside is like lined in plastic so it's white clean if anything happens. And I wanted one that was just a touch bigger than my current one. I'm really really glad that I got this. This is probably again one of the more functional things that I got probably the most functional thing that I got. Really, really pleased that I did pick this up. And then Lauren and I, what we're doing here is we bought three glitters. We bought some pots and we are going to split these out. So I'm going to do that now that I filmed this video. Well, after I filmed this video, I'm still in the process of filming it, but I've been left with the responsibility and I've been kind of putting it off because I'm a bit like, oh, this could go so drastically wrong because there's four grams of product in these and when do you ever finish a glitter? And if you do, then you can be like, great, I actually finished it. I'll, I'll have no qualms about repurchasing it. I was quite pleased with it. It's as much as I'm kind of dreading doing the physical splitting out because I'm just like, this could go very wrong. We sort of, we have the price of these and... I think it was the right thing to do. The first one that we got was the Glamour Sparks Golden. So this is the one that was more expensive. So I will show you the swatch of this one. I'm gonna be honest, these don't show up that well on camera. They are super pretty and super sparkly in real life, but they're just not the sort of thing that shows up well on camera. They're very iridescent, very sparkly. They kind of look like nothing in the swatches that you're gonna see, but they are beautiful in real life. Then the next one we got was one of the cheaper ones. So these are called Polyester Glimmers and this is the shade Pearl White. And the Pearl White one really looks like nothing in this one. I really, really struggled to get the camera to see that at all. So it's lovely in real life, I promise. The last one that we picked up was Pearl Blue, which again, in my head, was going to be really nice with those Elsa eyeshadows along with that eyeliner. Did I use it? No. No, I did not. So those were the things that I got in Cryolan. And on to the Sunday, we went into Harrods with the intention 
of purchasing the Harrods 2019 Christmas bear. But he was sold out. I couldn't get him, which I was really quite gutted about. But I did see this little guy and covering his ears. If I had bought the Harrods bear, I probably wouldn't have bought this. But I couldn't get the Harrods bear and I wanted something. So I got this wee guy. And he was reduced. He was down from £20 to £15. He is from the Harrods Winnie the Pooh collection. So he is like a little exclusive bear that makes up for not getting the Harrods bear. I do collect Winnie the Pooh things anyway. So I don't remotely regret purchasing him. But if I had got the Christmas bear I went in for, I wouldn't have left with this. I can say that. But he is... He is very adorable. But, I feel really bad saying this, this is partly why I've put fan merchandise into my no buy because what am I going to do with that? It's super cute and he's sitting in my bed and he looks lovely but he's just basically joined the ranks of loads of other plush toys that I have and I have loads in the loft and loads under my bed because I don't actually have enough space to display them all despite the fact I keep buying them. I can't resist plush toys with faces like I just... I, like, like I think I saw Toy Story as a child. In fact, let's not even blame Toy Story. I'm going to blame A Little Princess in which the father, he gives Sarah a doll. He says when you leave the room she comes to life and anything you tell her she'll give the message to me because he's going off to war or something I think and leaving... Yeah, he's, he goes off to war. I haven't watched this film in years. Very much. I've never been able to quite shake that sort of thing of like, toys have feelings and you're gonna hurt them if you leave them on the shelf because they want loving homes. Which I know is really weird and they need to go over it. I feel guilty when I see things with faces being left on shelves and I'm like, it's okay, I'll take you home and give you a loving home. You don't need to live in this soulless shop for the rest of your life. Even though they're probably not gonna live in this soulless shop for the rest of their life because somebody else will buy them, but yeah, it's a thing. So that was my second to last purchase. Later on on Sunday, we ended up back at Selfridges and I made another purchase. So this is two items but they're, they're kind of the same thing. So it's one of the Guerlain refillable lipsticks. So you buy the case and the lipstick separately. So the case that Lauren and I both got was the K-Doll case. I bought my first one of these when I was in Florida and I really like it. I got it engraved with my name and it just feels really special and I just had such a nice experience. I bought it at the Guerlain shop in Epcot and it was just a really lovely thing to get and I kind of have that mentality that I think a lot of people who have issues with shopping do when I kind of am like I've got one of these that I really like therefore and it's it's very applicable to beauty. If I've got one that I like having you know seven from the same range is, is better than having just one that I really like and I need to kind of get out of that mentality but I do really like the idea of sort of buying one of these every time I go on holiday or something and I like the idea of like just how chic and kind of vintage they are having like refillable lipsticks that you know you take it out and you can swap the the case around and just romanced by the whole idea of it basically. And so this is a lipstick shade that I bought, it's number 214, it's a kind of orangey, classic orangey red. So that is everything I bought in the order that I bought it in. Let me count up how many items that was. 18 items and I'm counting the lipstick case and the bullet as separate items. Even though I showed you them together I could have bought just one without buying the other so I'm counting them as separate in terms of ranking them. So that is everything that I bought. I'm going to rank them so if this, if you want a drink or whatever this is maybe the time. Go grab that and next stage of the video is that I'm going to rank them how excited I am about them. Okay so I think what I'll do is go from most excited to least excited. Okay that took quite a while which I wouldn't have shown you on camera but I'm really really torn between this and the next item but the thing I'm going to say that I am most excited about is my shoes. So they are still my number one most excited about item. Number two is this and number three is this. These very nearly were ranking above my Dior shoes but yeah the shoes pip it. But this is coming first above this one and this is exactly what I'm saying, is that this is not just eyeshadow, this is eyeshadow in a Star Wars box. And he 
broke me down into tears in the most recent film at one point. And it's just made me completely reevaluate the flipping character and how I feel about him, how I felt about him for all the other films. And it's his character moment that's making you rank this palette above this palette. Because if you were to take these out and you were to be talking about these shadows in the C3PO palette, I do really like the shadows. I think probably overall the shadows in this as a collection are better as well, but the shadows in this that I'm most excited about are bronze, which is the second one, and then violet void, which is this one here, whereas in the dark galaxy palette with the stormtrooper in the front, in this palette, these two shadows are just the most exciting shadows, and those two shadows pip all the shadows in this one for how excited I am about them. But as a palette, I would still keep, I'm still more excited about this palette overall as an item, as it is, including the packaging, including everything, than I am about this one. But it's a very, very close. Place number two and place number three are very, very close. And I'm going to be honest, one, two and three are, like, there is, like, this much, like, this much between them for how excited I am about them. That was quite a trialling process. Like, I feel quite emotionally drained having to decide between those three but yeah they are my top three items that I am most excited about. The fourth thing that I'm most excited about are these earrings. I mean generally I kind of have this thing where I sort of know these kind of are second fiddle to the Dolce & Gabbana earrings and generally if there's a version of something that I want a sort of watered down version of it again it's probably that sort of slightly perfectionist thing in me doesn't quite cut the mustard but I do really like these and I feel like the other thing is as much as I know I want those Dolce & Gabbana earrings I've had multiple opportunities to buy them and I've not quite been able to part with that amount of money for costume jewellery that I'm fairly sure I'll lose because I know myself and I have too much stuff so things go missing and until I could really have really cut down the amount of stuff that I own and can guarantee that those earrings won't disappear. Spending that amount of money on a pair of earrings is a bit like, oh. I feel like as well these aren't like a knockoff version. They're kind of like related and have a vibe, but they're not remotely the same. I can't quite explain why they vibe each other to me because they're, they're not remotely similar, but they kind of would go with the same outfits. And maybe that's part of it is maybe that I'm a bit like, Maybe it's not so much that these are a version of them, as in these kind of fill the void that I feel they would fill and that they would be the big accessory that I want to match those outfits, but these don't actually feel like a rip-off of the other earrings. Maybe that's why. So these are my fourth item that I'm most excited about. I feel like my fifth item is, is Winnie the Pooh. As much as everything I've said about the fact that fan merchandise tends to just exist and it doesn't serve a purpose and I have far too much of it and that is all true. I do really love Winnie the Pooh and I think this is super cute and I'm still, still raises excitement in me when I think about owning this and, and having him. So he's my number five. Number six is this ring which I just, I really like it. I know it's just really super cheap costume jewelry that will fall apart but I do, I love this shade of green so that is my, my number six. Number seven, I'm going to go for my Chanel box. Number eight, and this is quite difficult, but I'm still more excited about these than I am about anything else that's left. Even though they snag my hair and hurt to wear, I still think they're super beautiful. They still, I don't know if excited is really the right word for this, but they still spark joy in me because I love the colour and I just think they're super pretty and I really really like them so as much as I know in practice these annoy me they are still my, my next choice. Number nine is my Guerlain lipstick this is the holder so yeah I just I love I love the idea of being the kind of woman who has her lipstick holder I don't know I just I love Guerlain as a brand it just really appeals to me and I really like the sort of personalisation so I got something engraved in this. I'm not trying to be really annoying but I'm not going to share what it is because it's a word that just means a lot to me. It's a word that I think I would get. It's Latin anyway. Um, so <laughs> I'm sure half of you would just be like, what? 
it's a word that I might get tattooed on me at some point and it's a word that I really love and really identify with but I feel quite private about it. But yeah, so that is my lipstick holder and I love that I got my word on it. Okay, number 10, I'm going with my Glossy Play Eyeliner in the shade Nectar. Number 11, I'm going to go for the Cryolin Glitter, the Golden Glamour Sparks one. Number 12, this sounds really boring saying I'm really excited about this, but I'm so glad that I got this. It's just going to be so functional. I feel like the last few times that I've travelled and I've used the other one, I've been like, oh, that's so good. I wish I had another one of these because I end up with another like generic bag that if something leaks in or whatever, it's just, it's not going to be pretty. So I'm just really glad that I got another one of these. So I'm, I'm, I feel like I shouldn't say I'm excited about this. I feel like excited isn't necessarily how you should feel about a functional travel bag, but it is. Next up, I'm going to my Guerlain lipstick. I do really love this. I think it's really beautiful. I don't think it's unique in my collection because I have a lot of red lipsticks and I'm fairly sure I could probably dupe this and I've not worn it yet so I don't know how the formula is. The other colour that I've got in this line is more of a nudie colour so it's not maybe the best thing to judge a red shade by um, how a nude colour in a certain formula performs so I've not worn this yet but it is still probably the product that I'm next most excited about. Next up is the Cryolan Glitter in the shade Petal White. Next I'm going to put the Glossy Super Brown Serum. Then after that I'm going to the Glossy Eyeliner in the shade Early Girl. After that I'm going to do the Cryolan Glitter in the shade Petal Blue. And then the thing that I'm least excited about and it's interesting in that I, if I had if I'd filmed the swatches for this video after filming the content of the video this might not have been the same. The thing I'm least excited about now from the fact that it snapped straight away and that the colour isn't exactly what I remember buying is my glossy eyeliner in the shade Hardcore Velvet. That's what I am most least excited about. Next I'm going to do the order I would give these away in. So if a little goblin came along and said give me one more item and then I'll leave you in peace with the rest this is the order I'd give them back in in order to see what I'd preserve. This is like this is much more difficult than I kind of thought it would be. Okay, so the first thing that I'd give away to the little goblin would be my Glossier Super Bounce. Basically because this is the same as the one from The Ordinary in different packaging, I would give this away and I would replace the product. It's not the product itself I want to be without, but this specific version of the product I would give away and I would replace with a different version. And the second thing I'd give away would be this Hardcore Velvet Eyeliner. Third thing I'd give away would be the Petal Blue glitter. To an extent I think maybe the reason I'm less excited about this or that I would give it away more easily than I would give away other things though is because I have a Linkine glitter that has a bluey shift to it. It's not the exact same as this but it's related. So I think that's why part of my brain is like could do it without this one. Probably if I'm doing this and how quickly I would give them away to be left with things but if I could undo a purchase, this is probably one of the ones I would undo. The next thing I'm going to give back to the little goblin is the Cryolan Glitter in Petal White. And the next thing I'm giving back to him is the Cryolan Glitter in the Glamour Sparks Golden. Which is the one I'm most excited for out of the three. And I am really excited to use it, but I'm also quite aware that it's a messy thing to use. And it's the sort of thing I'm only going to use at a weekend or on a night out or something um, when I've got time. To sort of do my makeup and it's it's very much this will be the focus of that makeup and everything else will get sort of planned around that and I have quite a lot of products that I feel like that around that like if I'm wearing them they are the focus and everything else needs to be planned around that and I'm a bit like do you know what I need less statement products everything can't be a statement product that it doesn't work like that so that's the next thing I'd give back not that I want to but I would if there was a goblin forcing me to. I think the next thing I'd give back would be the hair slides. Um, as much as I really like them, they are really painful. And that's it's interesting to me in that I'm still excited about them and I'm more excited about these than other things that I've not given back yet. But practically, you know, I think in terms of giving things, I'm thinking in terms of how excited I am about things, it's how excited I am about them or how much joy they spark or however you want to kind of term it. It's that little like jump inside you that's like, oh, I really want to own this. I think in terms of giving things back, 
I'm thinking of the practicalities and how of what I'm going to be left with or what I'm giving up and the practicality of this is that these are going to hurt me and pull out my hair every time I wear them. These I would give up more easily than certain other things that are left. The next thing I would give up would be the glossy eyeliner in the shade Early Girl. The next thing I would give up would be the Guerlain lipstick in the shade 214. There's part of me that's giving this up because I'm a bit like, I've not used this yet. I don't know what the formula is like. It's almost easier to think I'd give this up because I know I have other red lipsticks. It doesn't feel quite so much like if I give this up I'll be left without this individual item. Even though this item and the fact it's Guerlain and the fact it goes with my case makes it very precious. Maybe if I'd used this, this wouldn't be going at this point and that's interesting, but I've not used it yet. So I feel like this is the next thing I would give the nasty little goblin. I really don't want to give up anything else. I, re I really... everything else is... Mmm! I don't like this game. Let's not play this again, guys. I feel like a monster. But the next thing I'd give back would be Winnie, because I have other Winnie the Poohs. This one is special in that it's the Harry's Winnie the Pooh and it's very cute. But I know I wouldn't have bought them if I had been able to get the Harrods Bear that I went in for. Where the Harrods Bear would rank in this might be slightly different. But I really didn't need another plush. It's not really serving a purpose other than being absolutely adorable and I don't want to give him away. So, you know, he's not actually going anywhere in real life. He is definitely staying. But for the purposes of this perverted game that I am volunteering to play, I will give up this adorable Winnie the Pooh and yeah I feel bad about that. Really stressful. I think the next thing I'd give up would be this. Again in terms of giving it up I'm thinking practically I'm thinking about what I'd be left with if I didn't own this anymore and I do have that other box as much as it would niggle at me that that other box isn't perfect. I think I'd rather live with an imperfect box and keep all those other things than have a perfect box and have to give up another one of those things. And that's quite interesting because that's what I need to when I'm doing this thing when I want everything to be perfect and be the perfect one. It is a choice between do I want this or do I want to live with something else. It's a monetary choice. Now that I'm thinking about it, there were a pair of Burberry earrings that I wanted to buy when we were away and I was really caught up in like the fact that I wanted this box to be right and it was going to niggle at me. Looking at everything else that I bought after I bought my big ticket items in day one, I could have bought all of them or I could have bought the Burberry earrings. There are things here that I don't want to give up so I'm not saying that I wish I could return all of them and buy the earrings, that's not the choice I would make. But I think actually I would maybe, as much as I literally said at the start of this video that I probably would repurchase this because it would still niggle at me and it would still niggle at me if I had given up this that would have been a hundred pounds more that I would have had there are other things that I'd have been willing to give up that would have made up the other hundred pounds that I would have needed for those earrings and I could have had the earrings and some of those items and maybe I'd rather be in that position I think the next thing I'd give up would be this yeah I think the next thing I'd give up would be the glossy nectar eyeliner which I really don't want to give up I'm really excited to use this actually. The more I think about using this, the more I'm like really excited to do something with this, but I think it is the next thing I would give up. Next thing I'm giving up is my Guerlain lipstick holder. I know that when I bought the one in Florida, this was an option and I picked the other one that I bought first over this one. That in its own way is already me having made this choice that if I didn't have this, I would still have the other one. And I, the, the one that I bought first is the one that I love the most. I love the idea of having lots of these and I'm the romance and the sort of vintage glamour of that notion but I think this is the next thing I'd give up. Okay the next thing I'm giving up after that is going to be this ring. I love this ring but the thing is I know this ring was 4 25 The stones are probably going to fall out it. I feel like the actual band, like the gold covering on it is already kind of rubbing off just from having worn it a few times. So I, I know that ultimately this ring is going to kind of get to a point where it's not wearable. So as much as I love it and I'm going to take a lot of joy from it in the meantime, I feel like this is already like a disposable product as much as I'm not particularly proud to say that because I don't like the idea that I bought like a disposable product but I feel like, I feel like costume jewellery just has a lifespan. I think a ring is the piece of costume jewellery you're going to notice it on the most because you're constantly putting it on and off and it's rubbing against your other fingers so that plating is going to lift and I love it and I really enjoy it and I'm going to really enjoy wearing it but I'm aware this has its own lifespan as it is so 
it's probably the next thing I would part, I would part with. Okay, after that, the next thing I'll part with is my bag, which I don't want to part with because I know the last few times that I've travelled, every single time since I've had this one in my life, every time I've travelled I've been like, oh I wish I had another one of these. So I know how much of a difference this is going to make, not in my day to day life, but every time I travel I'm going to use this and it is what I have been wanting and needing for ages and it's a boring purchase, that's, that's why I felt a bit weird about saying I was excited about it, it's a boring purchase, but it's a really practical purchase that I know I will get so much use out of and I know it's been exactly what I've wanted for such a long time. This is so interesting in terms of like all of the reasons to not have to give it to the little goblin. It's bringing out more thoughts in me about why I want it than just thinking about how excited I am about it. I'm really glad we did this guys. You should all do this and let me know how you got on with ranking your stuff both in terms of excitement and how quickly you'd give it back because this wasn't that high in the excitement thing but it's it's the fifth from the top of how of how much I want to hold on to it this I give this up next and I'm really gutted about it I'd be so gutted to not own this anymore and next up after that earrings from Wires and Lovers I do absolutely love these but I think if I had to give these up I am aware that there are the Dolce & Gabbana ones that I could buy at some point in the future I see they're actually not available to buy at the moment because they've taken the sale off their website but I imagine come summer that sale's going to go live again and they're still going to be there because if they were available to buy on the last day of the sale they're, the stock is somewhere so I could track them down or I could track down similar ones so I wouldn't want to give these up because I really like them but I think these would be the next item that I would find it the easiest to part with and that leaves me with my two Pat McGrath palettes and my shoes which were my top three items that I was most excited about so that's interesting because that's good that that correlation is there between these ones whereas the other ones have not been in the same order oh this is this is difficult thinking about these not as the palettes that they are but as eyeshadows I would give up this then this and I would keep the shoes if, if these were not in the packaging that they're in I'd give them although if these weren't in the packaging they were in they might have ranked more quickly on being things I would give up. They might not even make the top three. But they are in the packaging. That's the thing. They are. Quite shocked about what I'm going to say here. But the first thing the little goblin can have is the C3PO palette. Even though I think it's a better palette overall than this palette. The excitement at the idea of using these shadows that I really want to use from this palette. Guys, do you know what? Get back the shoes. I would give back the shoes next because there are other sparkly gold shoes that might not be as perfect as these but there are no other Star Wars Pat McGrath palettes. I don't want to give these shoes up. This is ridiculous. I'm so emotional about this in theory, giving up of things. No, I'd give the shoes up and have just the palettes which is not. I didn't think I'd be doing that. And then I'd track down a similar pair of shoes but I'd give these specific shoes up to keep those Pat McGrath Star Wars palettes. Really interesting. Give up the shoes. But I stand by what I said about the order of these palettes then. Do I? No, I don't. I don't. I'd give up the shoes. Then I'd give up this palette. Because I'm not... I'm more of a... All my favourite characters are on the light side. I'm not massively into the dark side. I'd give up this palette. And the last thing, if I could buy one thing, if I could only keep one thing from my entire London haul, it would be my C3PO palette. That is so not what I thought was going to come out of that. That's mad. That was really, really, really unexpected. But I stand by, stand by those decisions. That is, that's what I do. I think this is something I'm going to do going forward when I'm buying things on holiday is imagine me ranking it and thinking is this like a I want to hold on to this or is this a I like this but not just on holiday just in general I'm going to try and start thinking about everything that I buy in that scenario of ranking is this like a I really love it or is it 
like and I like it because that that is what I want to that's what I want to get to a point of is being able to acknowledge what my loves are and just part with the money for them rather than getting caught up in things that I just really like in the moment but what is quite interesting is let's talk about um the order from most used to least used now I feel bad because Winnie the Pooh can't really get used but he's been on my bedside table or on my bed during the day and on my bedside table when I'm asleep. So he's been on display so technically he's probably the most used but he doesn't really have a use so taking him out of the equation. Most used is my glossy serum which I think I said was the first thing I'd give back and I, I, this is quite interesting for me because, because when I was in the real grips of buying too many beauty products Every skincare product held promise and held excitement and things were going to be better when my skin was better because this product was going to give me good skin and that's going to make my life better. I was so attached. I put all this hope and all this expectation into each skincare product and I was excited about it because that was why I kept buying things. It was the only moment that I felt excited about anything was when I found something that had this promise and then... I had this little high in the moment that that thing became mine and I became the owner of it and that's why I kept buying things because I was in such a depressed state that that was the only bit of joy that I could find. What is I don't feel like that about this? I like what this has done to my skin. Would I repurchase this product for my skin? Yes. Will I repurchase this product? Yes. Will I repurchase this brand of this product? No, because I can get it from the ordinary and it'll do the same thing for my skin. This is my most used, it's the most practical thing that I bought. It's the thing I'm probably quickest to give up, but it's the thing I would replace. Does that make sense? After that is the ring. I've worn this more times than I've worn the hair clips, which are the third thing. Um, so yeah, these this hurts every time I wear it. I'm gonna wear these tonight though, so I am wearing them. I'm also going to wear this tonight, but I, I've worn the ring quite a lot. And after that is the hair clips. And after that, I haven't used or worn any of it. I don't know why because I wasn't... I used to have an issue where when I had my old channel because I filmed haul videos and they were part of my content I would keep things until I'd filmed them whereas I had no intention of filming a haul video even like this. I wasn't... this wasn't something I was planning to film until I was starting to really reflect on holidays and the mindset that I'm in when I'm on holiday and buying things and I think I could maybe fully explore that better by ranking what I bought in Florida actually but there's a lot more of that. This was like a more condensed amount of stuff to do that concept with which is why I started with this. Still doing that thing where I'm kind of keeping things good which I get why I'm doing it but also I am a bit like stop trying to keep things perfect and just use them. Maybe that's a, a string of that sort of perfectionism as well is that when things start to look a little bit used I don't love it. It kind of upsets me a little bit. There's also, I can really appreciate now, a beauty in palettes that have got lots of pans in. Before I would have looked at a, pan, a palette with loads of pans in it and been like, oh I don't like that, they don't look perfect. Whereas I'm kind of coming round over the last two years through doing my beauty no buy and being really immersed in the sort of beauty rehab community, I found that I, I do think there's a beauty now in a palette that looks really used. So I've, I've kind of discovered that beauty in the imperfection but even still within that I like a palette that's like oh that looks so used and you can see how loved it is or one that's pristine and see one that's in its way of like its first few uses from being a pristine item to being a panned item that looks super used and super loved. I don't like that middle bit and I'm not keen to get into that middle bit. And it, that's the thing what upsets me about those Pat McGrath palettes not having the sleeve is that I know they're going to look a little bit bashed at some point. And I don't like the idea of putting them into my box with my other palettes. I really am really uncomfortable with that idea actually. Which is interesting. It's all very interesting to me. Hopefully it's interesting to you. What do you guys think the relationship is between the things you're most excited about things you would give up from your possessions and how excited or quick to give up you are about things that you actually use or do you also own things that you're really excited about? Like I said those shoes are my number one thing that I'm most excited about but I haven't worn them yet. But I think it's partly because I want to keep them pristine and perfect and I'm looking at it right now and there's a 
storm and it's pitch black and I am going out tonight and will I wear those shoes? No, I'm not taking those shoes out in that weather but also why do I own these things that I love if I'm not using them? Thank you very much for watching. I know this has been a really long video. I hope it has been interesting and I will see you in my next video. Bye!